Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we exalt you in this place. Hallelujah. You are our God and we are your people. Hallelujah. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you and we bless your name. Hallelujah. For you are good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endure to every generation. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on this evening. Hallelujah. For your faithful love. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for another day. Hallelujah. 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 Mercy is new every morning. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You all may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give honor to God today. Hallelujah. And this, uh, this evening, we give honor to Apostle Ford and Pastor Glendora in her absence for blessing our life and teaching our family in the way we should go. Hallelujah. We are better today before your lives. We are a better people. Amen. From my husband to my children. Hallelujah. I thank God for your obedience. And to the family of God here at Kingdom Impact, I thank God for you. Hallelujah. Sister Deborah, hallelujah. I thank God for the brethren here at Kingdom Impact. Hallelujah. There's no greater honor I could bestow upon you is to call you family. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And to my husband, I thank you for being my covering. Amen. Hallelujah. You're a good husband to me. Amen. And to our family and friends watching by live stream. Hallelujah. I love you too. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. You know, Apostle, when you were up here, I was like, Apostle, stop. You're taking all of my message. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to take it myself and go on. <laughs> oh, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We're down to the message on this tonight. So one of my first things I learned here under the ministry uh, was how to pray. And I had to learn it real fast. When I came into the kingdom of God, my ignorance, that you know, the, the enemy doesn't play with us. He doesn't care that you're ignorant of things. Because the Bible tells us he come immediately for the word's sake. And so as we were coming to get grounded, he was coming to and fro, knocking us with every kind of wind. Because he knew if we ever get a hold of the word, hallelujah, hallelujah. If we ever got whole, hallelujah, what, what's going to be done unto him? Hallelujah. So the, tonight we're going to continue in the vein of uh, praying. And my title tonight is The Mystery of Prayer with a Subtopic No Longer Hidden. So by definition, prayer is a communication and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And through this fellowship, we begin to take on the life of God. We see like he sees. We speak what he has spoken to us. We do what we see him doing. And heaven is released in the earth. Through fellowship, time spent with God, we are being formed in his image and into his likeness. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on our, on our behalf. Looking for a man's heart that is loyal to him. A major purpose for prayer is to unlock the divine will of God for you being here in the earth. God needs your agreement. Go with me this evening to the book of 1 Corinthians 2. We're going to begin reading at verse 9. Amen. And I'm reading for the New King James Version. Amen. Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered to the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Now what has God revealed to us? Things we have not thought of? things we have not seen and things we have not heard. The word reveal here, here is uh, the word apokalupta. 
and it means to uncover, to bring to light, a sudden revealing, because the veil has been removed, and what is behind the veil is no longer concealed or hidden from view. And this word searches, who searches? Holy Spirit searches. Hallelujah. It means to carefully investigate, to examine or sift, to diligently examine all the things that the Lord is speaking in our spirit man. Holy Spirit searches the deep things. Now, what are those deep things? It is the Greek word bathos, which means deep waters. It's the immensity extreme degrees the deep laid plans it denote deep thoughts deep spiritual truths or deeply laid plans we find the ministry of holy spirit at work to take secrets to take the deep laid plans of god and reveal them to us so we are no longer ignorant or in the dark about his plans amen we know in jeremiah 29 11 tell us for i know the thoughts and plans i have for you their thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. Somebody say, I have a hope and I have a future. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is our helper. The Spirit of Holy Spirit, I mean, the ministry of Holy Spirit to help us to discover God's will, plan, and purpose, I say again, for our lives. No man, no woman can find these plans on their own. When we seek a it is he is on the job investigating, examining, sifting, and looking for answers needed to put us in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's move forward. 1 Corinthians 2.11. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Paul was saying that in the same way that no one really knows the deep thoughts of others except those individuals themselves, likewise, no one really knows the thing God of God except the Spirit of God. Therefore, the believer must be dependent upon the Holy Spirit to receive the wisdom of God for their lives. Verse 12, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. This word know is the Greek word oda, which means to have been or have perceived, to comprehend or understand and be aware of. The Holy Spirit has been sent to us to reveal things to us that we might comprehend, that we might perceive, that might we be aware of, the vast thing that God has prepared for us as born again believers. These plans are revealed through prayer, through time spent in the word. When it comes to 1 Corinthians 2.14, this is where our challenge begins. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What does natural man mean here? Natural is the Greek word sukias, and it is referring to the soul or mind. And the word man is the word anthropos, which refers to human or mankind. This is uh, the, and put those together, it said the natural man is a man who operates out of his mind out of his rationale, out of his emotions, and out of his logic. These words, that in the word foolishness is the Greek word moriah, which means it's folly, absurd, stupid, and dull to him. Spiritually discerned means that these things are spiritually comprehended. They are spiritually judged. They are spiritually understood. You who you have to understand spiritual things from a spiritual perspective. Paul is describing the inability of a soulish person or a person just functioning out of the soul to perceive spiritual things. Someone who operates out, operates out their soul, out of their mind, out of their reasoning faculty, one who operates out of the logic, 
out of their emotions cannot see answers from God. Hallelujah. Because these answers are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. So let me recap what this uh, scripture is really saying. But the soulish human that functions out of his or her logic, reasoning, emotions, does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly, absurd, and stupid to him or her. Noah can she or he know them because they are spiritually comprehended, spiritually judged, and spiritually understood. And I had to laugh when I finally got the fullness of this scripture because I can think back. It was Park Chapel, and it was many, many years ago. This probably was, uh, I know my husband and I did not have children at that time. And when we walked in at Park Chapel, there was a moving of the Holy Spirit going on in the place. And at that time, because I, I did not judge things spiritually, I began to say, what in the world is this? What I was saying was, this is foolishness. Hallelujah. I was saying it was foolishness to me because I was operating out the soulish realm, out my emotional, out my illogic. And I was saying to myself, I don't understand this stuff. So it's foolishness to me. Amen. Amen. Prayer is a spiritual transaction to the natural man is folly. Hallelujah. So if you ever heard somebody say you pray all the time, they're probably in their <laughs> natural mind, in the carnal mind. Pay no attention to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to keep here a bit. Hallelujah. On the natural man. The natural man functions on a lower realm. His belief system is rooted on what he can see, feel, hear, taste, or touch. However, he or she must shift from walking by sight, sense knowledge, to walking by faith, revelation knowledge. Well, how is this accomplished? Well, we must begin to base our thoughts, actions, and identity on who we are in Christ from the new man reality and from the word of God. What do I mean? My new thoughts and the thoughts God thinks of me is what I began to think on now. They come from a time spent in his presence. You don't just begin to think like God because you said, I walked in kingdom impact every Sunday. You begin to think like God when you spend time in his presence. When you spend time in the word, hallelujah. Remember, praying is saying what he has said in our time together. See, when you're in when you have spent time with the Lord you understand that you are born from above you understand that you are a new creation in Christ you understand you have the mind of Christ that you are a son of God that you have been purchased by the blood hallelujah that I have been made righteous hallelujah how about you the greater one lives in me hallelujah that lives in the world hallelujah and I said and and in him, we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. That's the reality of the new man. Hallelujah. 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 The reality of the new man understands that he bore my sicknesses. He carried my pain. Hallelujah. Each and every day of our lives, the battle lies in whether you are dominated by your flesh or dominated by your spirit. Your flesh gravitates to what it can see, taste, feel, or smell. Therefore, it leans toward the influence of Satan and his kingdom, which operates in the physical realm. The devil is flesh-oriented, working through carnal, natural things. He tempts you to not believe God by things you can see and feel. On the other hand, the Lord operates in the spirit realm, primarily through his word, Amen. Either your spirit will dominate you or your flesh will instead. Your spirit mind and your physical mind are two separate entities within you. When they don't agree, double-mindedness occurs. What do I mean? Hallelujah. James 1 says in 6 and 8, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for, who, for he who doubts, it's like a wind of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. 
for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Well, what needs to happen? He needs to get on something solid. What's solid? The word. It never changes. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot a tittle of this word. Hallelujah. You can stand on the word. Hallelujah. God is our rock. He is our help. He is a present strength in a time of trouble. Whatever happens in this economy, I will not fear. Why not? Hallelujah. Because God takes care of me. He's my shepherd. Hallelujah. I shall not lack. Hallelujah. And none of these things move me. Hallelujah. I'm not looking to what I see. I'm looking to the word for my answers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Prayer connects us to God. In time with him, I see him. Hallelujah. As he is, so are we in this world. I see my shepherd. Hallelujah. I see my healer. Hallelujah. I see my peacemaker. Hallelujah. When I'm looking at him. Hallelujah. He is my deliverer. Hallelujah. In God will I trust. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The key to the Christian life is training the physical mind to agree with the spirit mind, which is the mind of Christ. You are a spirit, soul, and body. Your born again spirit always agrees with God. Your body is under the influence of what it can see, taste, feel, smell. Studying God's word is one of the ways we draw out the wisdom that is in our spirit. And it helps us and teaches us how to pray. When you're reading the Bible, you are receiving words with your physical eyes that are spirit and life. That life is taking, is taking its toll on you. Hallelujah. It's developing you. Hallelujah. It's creating the good, that man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you, oh yeah, as you take this knowledge into your soul, new thoughts and new ideas begin to emerge. Hallelujah. The light bulb goes off. Hallelujah. You say, I am somebody. Hallelujah. That's a new thought where people had their foot on your head. Hallelujah. You said, I am somebody in Christ. Hallelujah. And nobody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's your spirit and your soul becoming a one mind. When your soulish realm gains a truth and begins to embrace it, your spirit connects and agrees. Once the connection is made, it is now revelation to you. Hallelujah. And it becomes your reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody know God tonight as a healer because they, they spent time with God and God showed them. Hallelujah. I don't care how you feel. He said, I am the great physician. I'm your healer, not the doctor. No, you can go to the doctor. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. You go to the doctor. But understand, don't give the doctor the glory. Give it to the one who's the healer. Amen. 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 And so when a, a, a God's word takes root in your soulish realm, this is what we call the renewing of the mind. You see, until the mind starts being renewed, you cannot understand spiritual things. However, God always have a plan to connect us to his plan. And he will, and we will see the answers starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, beginning at verse 2. Here you see the role of playing, uh, of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. You know, it was fun, and I got to say this. When we were walking in tonight, the Holy Spirit gave me this thought, and I said it, my husband heard me say it. He said, you don't need to use the guns in this fight. You need to use tongues. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 First Corinthians 14, 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, all of us who are Unity Fellowship people have heard this scripture many, many times. Hallelujah. 
See, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 talks about different kinds of tongues in 14, but I'm talking tonight about personal tongues. Amen. And so in these personal tongues, it said this word tongue in uh, 14 2 is the word leo, leo, which means to chatter, to utter, to converse, to go in with a conversation. Hallelujah. The unknown tongue is the word glossy. The tongue, a language, flowing speech, a language not naturally known. It is a real language of spiritual substance. Hallelujah. And this verse states that we do not speak to men, but to God. This is language that is directed to God. Let me let me let me uh, throw this um, research piece of research I found on this. This comes from researchers at the University of Pennsylvania, 1971. This is a study of the brain while speaking in tongues. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania Healthcare System discovered that when one is speaking in tongues, there is a decreased activity in the frontal lobes of the brain which is the area associated with being in control of oneself. They measure regional subrural blood flow by uh, special imaging machines. While the subjects were speaking in tongues, it shows that they were not in control of the brain's usual language centers during this activity. This was consistent with the participant's claim of a lack of intentional control while speaking in tongues. It reflects a complex pattern of changes in brain activity. When a man or woman speaks in tongue, his spirit is praying. God is in control. Hallelujah. Hey, that's what this is all that is saying. Hey, ain't no activity in the brain. This is no mind thing. This is a, a, a spirit thing. Amen. Amen. This is the spirit taking over. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the spirit. Hallelujah. This word mysteries is the Greek word. Which you, what, everybody know what this word mystery is. The Greek word. Yeah, there you go. Hallelujah. A mystery or secret doctrine. Things hidden. Something you can only be think, something which can only be comprehended, known, or seen by revelation. So when we pray in tongues. We are talking to God in a language he understands, in a conversation purely built on faith. Hallelujah. What it says built on? Faith. faith. Hallelujah. So sometimes we try to comp understand too much without faith. You cannot understand God without faith. It's impossible to please him because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praying in the spirit will move, will move from a place of being governed by your senses to a place governed by the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How can we see what God has prepared for us? You can see it when you pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Go with me to verse 14, I mean, 1 Corinthians 14, 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. The same thing uh, personal tongues do for the natural body is the same thing that uh, um, per, I mean, public uh, praying in tongue does for the church. Both of them edify. Amen. When I'm praying in tongues, I'm edifying myself. Hallelujah. And this word edify is a Greek architectural term. That means when a builder, when he, a, a man is building something, he's amplifying that place. Hallelujah. He's enlarging that place. Hallelujah. So when you're praying in tongue, you're enlarging your spirit, man. You're praying and your body is connecting. See, amen. We just heard that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if your mind is not sound tonight, you can pray in tongues. Hallelujah and it'll build you up hallelujah and set you on a solid rock hallelujah hallelujah when watch this then this is what i found too when i was studying watch this we all said paul said 
I speak in tongues more than all of you. And Paul is known to have more revelation than anybody else too. Hallelujah. From praying in tongues. Hallelujah. From praying in tongues. Amen. It's a benefit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want more revelation or a greater spiritual capacity, then you need to exercise our human spirit and speak in tongues and pray. Hallelujah. Say, when we pray in tongues, so many things happening. We understand when we pray in tongues, we, just like we said, we can give thanks well. We give thanks well. Hallelujah. We speaking unto God. It's just me and God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the Holy Spirit said, it contacts you with glory. Hallelujah. The same, and, and so the spirit, the scriptures referring to those who pray in the spirit. If you would tap into this gift and pray in the Holy Ghost, it would unravel all kinds of mysteries for you. And I have seen this time and time again in my life. I remember this time, this is one that stands out with me, but it, it was one today, but I just said I didn't want to publicly say it. But um, this is when my youngest daughter, she was in kindergarten. So when I walked, uh, I took her to school one day, and I think I came back and brought her lunch. So when I brought her lunch, uh, she was sitting, all, all the kids that I knew, to be very disruptive she was sitting in that group so I was very disturbed <laughs> but I do know this this I knew this by the word foolishness is in the heart of a child so I wasn't gonna go to the teacher and say get in her face and like my child is perfect I don't know what my daughter is capable of doing when I'm not around amen amen so <laughs> I said I have to handle this in tongues. Hallelujah. So I went back home that evening. Hallelujah. I mean, that, that morning I went on back and I began to pick it up in tongues. Hallelujah. And I prayed in tongues. I don't know how long I prayed. But when I went back to pick her up, when I walked in the classroom, she was with the kids that paid attention. <laughs> she was paying attention. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, uh, it, uh, tongues is so powerful. That's why it gets so uh, many times people war against tongues. When you want, so you say, let's pray in tongues. Somebody want to start arguing about, is it for the church, is it not for the church? Because the power behind it, the power that is behind it. Uh, and, and, and I can recall this, this is how powerful tongues is. Uh, I, I, I just pray in tongues for different things. I don't know what to pray for how I ought. So, so I just pray in tongues. And I can remember um, one of the ladies uh, years back, she saw me one Sunday when I walked in and she ran to me. And now this is a person that I don't know her name, but I know her face because I, you know, you know, people faces at kingdom. And she uh, said, oh, I, I wasn't an elder at that time. I wasn't an elder. She said, Sister Pulliam, thank you for praying for me. And I knew she was talking about tongues, so it didn't throw me off, but it just, I was baffled by the power of tongues, that you saying I can pray in tongues and I can connect to somebody I don't even know. <laughs> this is what, this is the power of tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we need to get in, get up under these tongues. See, somebody tonight is battling sickness. But the Bible said when we pray in tongues, it edifies the body. It builds up the body. So it has, you don't need to just cry all night or say, what can I do? The, the uh, Holy Spirit got answers for us. He is in us. Hallelujah. And what? all you got to do is call on him. All you got to do is say, God, help me. And Holy Spirit waiting. He's waiting because he said he wants to show you the plans that God has for you. The plans that God has for us is a plan. His will is for healing, is it not? Isn't his will to uh, be take care of you financially? Amen. This is the perfect will of God, but it can be picked up by tongues. It is there was so many times my husband and I back in the day just prayed in tongues. And this was for a financial thing. We, we didn't ask people. We didn't go around begging people for money. 
because we know in our mind we have put our uh, uh, face like flint. God, you are our source. You are our source. And we just prayed in tongues. And every time, like you said, supernaturally, somebody met us calling, hey, bro, hey, sis, never, I never asked a person for a dime. And this is how we picked it up. Said, Holy Spirit know all things. He searches the deep things. Hallelujah. The deep things. Hallelujah. You don't need to be weary. Hallelujah. You know, because you got the helper inside of you. What you're waiting on. Hallelujah. Why do you think he gave him to you? To help you. He knows you need help. Hallelujah. And to say you don't need help, that's pride. What? See, that's what he died for. He came that we have life and have life more abundantly. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit came for. Hallelujah. To open up the plans. See, God is not the only one. I mean, Jesus is not the only one who had a plan. Everybody in here, there's a plan for your life. Hallelujah. You're not going to tap into it, like I said, for just being faithful walking in those doors. You're going to be purposeful. You're going to get in, in these tongues and God's going to open up the plan for you. Amen. Amen. So I'm saying to you tonight, hallelujah. We often say it for, to those who have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Somebody, like I said, you're weary. You got pain in your body. But the answer is the Holy Spirit tonight. The answer is you praying, open up your mouth. Open up in the flowing chatter. Chayabate kolomata. Come mayala ba sheke hotaba. Elamanana ma sheke. That's what needs to flow out of you. Hallelujah. 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 Is there anybody this evening? Hallelujah. Who has a need to receive Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. You desire to receive Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Come, don't, don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Your, that's your deliverance riding on it. Hallelujah. Your deliverance is riding on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where there be one. You can sing in tongues. You can sing in tongues anytime you want to. Hallelujah. You don't wait, need to have a feeling fall on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah is there one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can praise him. Hallelujah. 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 We need answers tonight. Hallelujah. We need answers at Kingdom Impact. Hallelujah. We need answers in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our answer. Praying in an unknown tongue. Hallelujah. We can't make decisions without the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We, things are too big for us. Hallelujah. So we need the aid of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need some joy, pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You need some joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, we bless your name tonight, Father. For there's no God like unto you in all the earth. Hallelujah. You are a big God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you do all things well. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you honor. We give you glory. We give you glory. If you're watching by live stream, just ask for the Holy Spirit and engage, hallelujah, and let that flow and speech come out of your mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we honor you this evening.
Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Fashion. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah.